In this lesson, we are going to look at a quicker method to perform polynomial division, known as synthetic division. Before we start, note that knowing this method is not necessary, so if you like performing polynomial division as you already know it, you can just use that method and ignore synthetic division altogether. To learn synthetic division, we will look at the same example we used to learn polynomial long division. Our old setup for polynomial long division would look something like this. But if we can write the divisor, which is x plus 2, in the form x minus a, we can employ synthetic division. x plus 2, written in this form, is x minus negative 2, since subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. We can then set up the synthetic division, which for now probably looks like half a box with a bunch of random numbers. Don't worry if it looks a little confusing right now. Let's go over the process in depth and clear a few things up. Once we've taken the divisor and converted it to the x minus a form, we can draw up the half box symbol that you saw before. Then we can bring down the a value, which is negative 2 in this case, to outside the upper left side of the box. From here, we bring the coefficients of the dividend polynomial into the upper half of the box. So first we write the 2 from the x cubed term, then the negative 3 from the x squared term, then the 4 from the x term, and finally the 5, which is the constant term. This is the setup that you saw on the last page. Now that the setup is complete, we can begin to perform the synthetic division. The first step to any synthetic division will always be to take the first coefficient, in this case the 2, and write it underneath the box symbol. Next, we multiply the a value, which we got from our divisor, so that's the negative 2 that we have on the left, with the number that we've just dropped down, which is positive 2. Their product is negative 4, which we write in the lower half of the box underneath the next coefficient. Then we add that next coefficient, the negative 3, and the number we've just written, negative 4, to give us negative 7, which we write underneath the box next to the first coefficient. From here, the process repeats itself until we filled in the last column underneath the constant term from our dividend. We'll now multiply the negative 2 from the left with the negative 7 we just wrote to get positive 14, which we write under the next coefficient, which is the 4. We then add the 4 and the 14 to give us 18, which we write next to the negative 7 under the box. Again, we repeat. Negative 2 times 18 produces negative 36, which we write under the constant term 5, we then add the 5 and the negative 36 to get negative 31. Since the last column is filled in, we now know that the division is complete. We just have to interpret our result, which is what we have underneath the box. I find it easiest to start with the last number on the right, in this case, the negative 31. This last number is always the remainder from the division. Then, working our way back from right to left, the next number, 18, is the constant term of our quotient. Next, the negative 7, is the coefficient of the term that is one degree higher than the constant term, which would be the x term of our quotient. And finally, the two is the coefficient on the term one degree higher than the x term, which would be the x squared term of our quotient. If our dividend had been a higher degree polynomial, we would have another number in our result, which we could interpret in the same manner. So if we had another number to the left of the two, it would be the coefficient on the term that is one degree higher than the x squared term, so the x cubed term, so on and so forth. As you can see, the quotient and remainder we get using this method are the same as we found using regular long division in the earlier lesson video. If you'd like to see a test to prove that this is correct, please refer to that video. A couple of notes before I let you go. To use synthetic division, we must be able to write the divisor in the form of x minus a. So if there is a coefficient on the x term of the divisor, be sure to factor it out and either apply it to the dividend or apply it after you have completed the division. When you have a binomial divisor with a positive constant term, just remember to do what we did in this video, where we change the positive to be a subtraction of a negative. Also, if you're very comfortable with regular long division, don't feel pressured to learn synthetic division. It's just a tool to help speed up the process, and you can use it to check your own work but it's not necessary for you to know.